boy, I tell you what, that that was a sadistic picture of a steak if I've ever seen one. That was a Kobe ribeye. So I, yes, yeah. you're welcome. Uh, Thank I you, was, America. I was <laughs> I was licking my screen. On this episode of the John 1911 podcast, the Wilson pistol passes a thousand rounds, Kobe ribeye, the commies riot, and why I live in small towns. Okay, good evening, everybody. This is uh, Danny and Marky, and welcome to episode 175 of the John 1911 podcast. So uh, we're doing this one a little bit different. I've been on the range most of the day, and now I have just left a uh, very swanky restaurant. And um, I am uh, probably going to be uh, trying to head home here. And uh, I'm, I sent pictures, sent pictures of my steak to Danny, and uh, thought I'd rub it in his, uh, rub it in his face a little bit. Yeah, well, mission accomplished. That's you did right. mission, mission accomplished. My Japanese Kobe ribeye, fourteen ounces. I can't. I couldn't figure out what the. Uh the weed things were coming out of the green beans or asparagus though. That was, that was a call it chili green beans or mango chili green beans. So, um, pretty awesome. Um, they were a little bit too spicy for me tonight. So, but, um, you know, we, uh, this is kind of one of my normal places that I come to. And, um, I had a, had a guy on the range today and uh, after we shot, we ended up putting in work, and um like you know cutting the ranges and cutting trees and doing all that he didn't want to go home so his family's all out of town and um you know he didn't have to be home anywhere and i'm like well dude you just stay here and we'll just i'm because i'm working on when you're done i'm just going to be uh working on the range and then i you know if you want i'll just take you out to dinner so um it's the first restaurant i've been in i think in three months actually sat down and ate in the bar so that's still not uh, allowed here. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> vote re- vote re- you know what? Vote Republican. Help is on the way. So. Uh, it's got to. <laughs> well, they do. Yesterday, they did start to allow outdoor dining, but no more than 10 in the whole place. Well, I will tell you this. They did have a... Uh, it's like there were some limitations, like um, like every other table was blanked out. And as a matter of fact, they even had a thing where uh, like if there's so like if every other table's is blanked um, generally, but in some places they weren't. What they would have to do is like, like there was a there was a couple sitting like the next kind of the next table over. Well, they were sitting across from each other because it, you know, it's like a boyfriend, girlfriend, or husband and wife. I don't know what they, you know, what they were. But Saturday night is probably a date. So we, I went to go sit, you know, in the chair opposite of Doc, and um, they were like, "Well, you can't because there's somebody sitting there because our backs would have been within like probably a foot of each other." So. Doc and I had to sit side by side like some gay couple or something. And so, and well, just... I, I, I won't go there. A good thing <laughs> Freeze isn't on with us tonight. No. Well, I'll tell you what, we got to definitely say this because uh, it is, you know, I actually missed some of the riot things that are going on in Cincinnati. Uh-huh. I mean, it's low level riot stuff, but uh, Freeze is working tonight and Freeze is working in the ghetto. And it's 11 o'clock. He's been working for two hours. And um, he's going to have a long fucking night. And oh, I yeah. hope he's safe because he, you know, he's been through them all. And so well, this will be the first ride he's been in that I haven't been in. So prayers to freeze you tonight. Can, you can always go or you can come up here. We have plenty. No, 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 no. You know what? You, see, you know what? You see what you've done. Once you've done. Urban riots and college riots, like the sports riots. Yeah, you know what? You've seen all the riots. I mean, oh, you know, yeah. it's like I don't even like I've been like in the middle of these fuckers. And it's like, no, no I'm not. You know what? What's when sweet? I was younger, I used yeah. to be like wanting to be a badass and, you know, Billy badass. And like, you know, I, I'm not a pussy. 
now I'm older and like maybe I maybe I, I don't know maybe I am a pussy or maybe I'm just maybe I maybe I tell myself I'm retired be, and that's the only way I can live with it because I'm really a pussy and like oh, I know I'm retired now I've earned it you know maybe I was just secretly a pussy this whole time but I'm just like I don't even give a fuck you know I just I just you know I just well, can't, you, I just can't care right you and I are both retired and you know we're we're both members of the KMA the Kiss My Ass Club you know we're out of here and... you know what yeah I mean it's just like you know but you know what I'm gonna make a point though so all of our mail. Uh, for John 1911, goes to a mail center. And uh, the reason it goes to the main mail center is because the postal inspector watches our mail um, because we request it because we've had issues. And so, you know, we'll just leave it at that. So I have to go into the city to get mail. Um, Unless it's like, you know, something delivered, you know, through like controlled like the ATF and FFLs. But like writer correspondence goes through this mail center, the postal inspector. And so I have to go downtown into the city and like well i mean i'm not you know i'm not going tonight to go get mail it you know maybe i'll go tomorrow but the thing is i'm certainly glad wilson combat that i'm carrying an 18 plus one uh you know appendix 1911 and an 18 round reload in my pocket because you know that that 10 round uh ed brown nine millimeter you know it's not really enough with a single reload to really get through a riot you know to shoot your way out of a riot you know a Reginald denny situation when well, you're outnumbered like 30 to one well speaking of that did you get that statistic i sent you on the increase in gun sales i almost couldn't believe that what was it's, it like um, um eight million 12 million something yeah. In like a month? Yes, in one month. I mean, that almost seems like a typo, dude. It's like it... no, I did my research. It's factual. It is <sighs> factual. Now you have to ask yourself: Are people arming up for the apocalypse? Are they arming up for the COVID? Isn't it funny now? COVID's on the back burner compared to everything else going on with these riots. Well, you know what? The liberal media now has a new narrative. So it's like, forget the COVID. We're out of here. Now we've got somehow this is going to be, you know, this is going to be Donald Trump's fault or it's going to be my fault because I'm a I'm a white middle aged, you know, I guess, Republican. And, you know, somehow all this bullshit's my fault, you know, and it's just like, okay, whatever. So cough, cough, no more commie cough. But, yeah, you know, I mean, it's like that's just over. Like, How, you know. Well, and you know, here's the, here's the thing. Speaking of the riots, did you see that the coroner released their autopsy report and that <clears throat> the victim did not die from the policeman's leg? He or from asphyxiation or strangulation. He died from heart related problems and illicit toxins in the system. Did, did you see that? No. And so we are referring to the guy <clears throat> up in uh, Wisconsin or Minnesota. I don't even Minnesota. know. Minnesota. Yeah, I can't. To me, in look, Minneapolis. It, anything north of Chicago is Canada to me. So, <clears throat> you know, it's like whatever. It's like, you know, Quebec, <laughs> Minnesota. It's all the same. So, no, I haven't heard that. But look, here's the problem. I mean, okay, there's there's two ways to look at this, all right? If I'm this Chauvin, Chauvin, whatever this police officer's name is, his defense attorney, and I'm going to try to, you know, if I'm trying to make it to defend my client, which, you know, we need, he needs to be defended. You know, he's got it. He's going to look for anything he can. You know, it's going to be the guy died. You know, they're going to make an argument that this man died from toxic shock syndrome from a tampon from his mom from 1975. But the reality is I have fought many fucking people to submission. And that's the whole point. You don't stay on somebody's fucking neck. 
for eight minutes or whatever the fuck happened. I mean, there's just no way out of this. <clears throat> I mean, there is no, <clears throat> I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck if his heart exploded <clears throat> because I don't know, because he, he, he'd been, he'd been uh, uh, doing lines of uh, cocaine, like a freaking freight train. You know, it's like the reality is that cop sat on his neck for seven or eight minutes. And that was just, that's just, that's just no way that works. You know, that is, you know, and here's the thing. People that don't, this opens a whole can of worms. I have a very strong opinion on a lot of this and it's not politically correct, but it's true. And it's not really related to this officer situation because the, what, the, what the officer did was wrong and his behavior, I mean, I'd say, I don't know, more than about two minutes in is wrong. But here's the thing. There are going to be people now who don't understand anything about biting. And they're going to sit, and you saw this in the past, like chokeholds, you can't do chokeholds. And you got these guys like, well, you got to do these partial, like, you can't do a, you can't, you know, squeeze on the carotid artery and you can't, you know, this bullshit, these, these lawyers and people that sit on their ass come up with these rules of engagement of when, you know, when it's a fucking pig pile. And the reality is, you know, you have a choice. You can hire cops that can fight because being a cop means you need to be able to fight. And if you can't fight, you better bring some other skill to the table that can help get you over the line. Like that's an argument for like, you know, these female police officers, you know, they're generally women are what four inches and three to four inches and 30 to 40 pounds lighter than the average male. Yes. You know? And so, you know, but the idea being like a woman in some cases <clears throat> can diffuse a situation because it doesn't become a, you know, a standoff, like a macho. Oh yeah. Fuck you. Oh yeah. Fuck you. And it's, you know, two guys going to have to settle it with fisticuffs where a woman may be able to come be like, can we just fucking just hear me for a minute? We can all fucking get through this. So, you know, you have, there has to be a balance. <clears throat> but that balance is understood. The other side of that balance is motherfucker better be able to throw down. And if you got a cop that can't fight, you got a cop that has to tase everybody. And t- I'd rather tase. I mean, everyone knows you tase before you go before you go hands on. Generally, if it's going to be bad. I mean, you know, you don't tase to just do a takedown. But you know, you. If you can't fight and you get in trouble and you can't tase or you don't tase or the tase doesn't work, you have to shoot people. And having cops that can't fight, that can't choke people out, that can't submit people, that can't really hurt like for real, like for really do, fucking really put the hurt on somebody, that's a cop that's more likely going to have to shoot his or her way out of a really bad situation. And I am convinced, I don't care, I don't care what the, what the lawyers say, that you get, you get guys that are more qualified to be accountants being police officers and people get hurt. Cops get hurt. Uh, you know, uh, subjects get hurt. Suspects get hurt. And you know, so I, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with this, you know, because the need of the neck thing is like, that's a, that's a big one. Like, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a very, very effective way to, you know, to, to, to seduce somebody. And without getting into like all the martial arts things people that don't understand this, like to physically control people, like to get someone to stay on the ground. It, 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 if you can control their head, it makes it harder for them to get up. Cause the first thing that people generally have to do is they have to raise their head or their head leads the way. So if you can hold somebody's head on the ground, you have 
some advantages in certain situations to keeping somebody physically on the ground, keeping their ass on the earth. And so, you know, I just, I haven't seen it yet too much, but, you know, I'm just curious if it's be like this whole like neck, you know, knee to the neck thing is going to be, you know, oh, we can't do that anymore. It's like, oh, fuck, you know, you can't fucking choke people. Yeah, you can't do the fucking knee to the neck. It's like, fuck. I mean, you smiles well just taste yeah, everything. Uh, Get on the ground. What is mm-hmm. everything going to be passive restraint from now on? I mean, You're right. Bullshit. You and I both I mean, know certain you know, situations call for certain actions. That's it, it, Yeah. And, you know, like, <clears throat> You know, but things happen, and it's like, but this situation, look, there. this is going to sound a little, a, you know, a little counterintuitive, and I don't mean it if it offends somebody, but in a way, this is just a truism of something that I predicted in the past. And when, I, when I've gotten on this podcast or on our social media, and I have said that body cams dash cams and body cams will change the world because the narratives that the media portrays of how things happened it's most of the time it's bullshit and it's for the benefit of society to see what people are really dealing with but that camera swings both ways and it's for the good of society this cop had no reason to sit on this dude's neck that long. I mean, I've seen resisting arrest. I've seen, you know, fucking, fucking rolling around in crazy bullshit. And they had that guy. I mean, I didn't understand why. And, you know, and then, I mean, like, and just for optically, like, he's, you know, he's a little guy. And which proves the point. Like, he's not a big guy. This cop does not seem like a big guy. Um, he had his hands in his pockets. I mean, he's not even working hard to maintain his balance. Like, this this guy isn't trying to get up. Why is he on his neck for that long? Well, the answer is there's no good reason. This cop is going to prison. My, my question is, okay, the, the media showed where the suspect was not doing any kind of resisting. Then all of a sudden it cuts to where he's face down on the ground with a knee to the neck. So how did you get from passively walking in handcuffs to face down with the officer's knee in his neck? Something happened in a time frame which still hasn't been shown yet is my question. What did the suspect do to have to be taken down from passively walking well look here's the thing i mean i don't know what happened and again i don't want to jump to conclusions i can just i can know i can only go by what we know right now and i can also only go by the training that i i have received and experience there is very rarely any situation where you take somebody to the ground that there is no resistance so you know, there just isn't, it's almost a natural, it's like, it's like the, it's like, it's like sticking the finger down your throat and you get a gag reflex. If I, if I, if I do something to disrupt your balance, Danny, as I'm getting ready to fucking throw you down, your body, you will flail and do shit on the way down. I mean, cause you will, you will resist. It's a natural human instinct. So, you know, I, personally do not hold you know that kind of resistance at least initially against somebody now you know you know when you also see a situation where it takes like eight cops to hold somebody down because the guy's on pcp or he's a fucking you know a hulk you know i mean that's a different scenario but that's not where we're looking at here this skinny ass cop is on this guy's neck for eight minutes and it's just, it's bizarre and it's just not good. And, you know, it's, that's the difference between, you know, uh, being a hero and being well, a, a son of I, a bitch. Well, I, you I, know, you, you got to tap totally people out that the cop, the cop was wrong. I totally agree with that. 
my problem is, is there mo- missing tape footage, number one? And number two, you know goddamn well that he's tried and convicted in the media and on social media already. So, you know who oh, he, he is. is. So, if I were his lawyer, I'd be going for the COV, the change of venue, in a heartbeat. Because even with that, the guy will never, ever stand a chance. Yes, he's going to go to prison. I agree. I agree with that. But he needs a change of venue if he even wants to have any kind of a chance. Oh, yeah. We're not even to the point where it's even been assigned to uh, – he hasn't even – been or has he been or he hasn't, I don't think he's even been arraigned yet. So this isn't he's this isn't even on anybody's actual docket for like you know set for set for you know pre you know pretrial hearings and motions. So I mean that's a long way off. But like okay, there's a couple other things here that kind of uh you know kind of this is this is a little bit of Republican versus Democrat. But this is a little bit um like Democratic cities versus Republican cities. And, you know, I'm obviously very pro-police, but, you know, it doesn't... Nobody ever wants to talk about the cops that need to be fired. Nobody ever wants to talk about the guys in Delta Force that get fired or the guys from SEAL Team 6 that got fired. There are people that need to be fired. And, you know, I don't know this police officer's situation, but that's going to be the first thing as an attorney or prosecutor or, uh, you know, representing the family is I want to see this person's uh, employment history. And I want to see his his uh, his interviews and I want to see his psych evaluations. And I want you know, you can do all this kind of show, shit, because here's the thing. I'm going to get I'm going to tell two stories here from two different police departments and two Two very similar problems, but they had they all they ended up in two completely different resolutions. And this is about police officers that needed to be fired. Okay, so the first one is it's pretty well known because it happened in city of Cincinnati. And um, this guy's, uh, you know, he works for uh, he's a patrolman and there's issues. He's having significant issues. He's crashing cars. He's forging timesheets. He's not, he's, you know, working, but not working. And they had decided that they had, this guy was trouble. And he was, uh, he was uh, basically, you know, a, 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 a layabout scam artist. I mean, he just was a kind of a piece of shit and was always in, just involved in all these bullshit problems. And they, you know, they was like, this dude, they got to fucking get this guy out of here. He was a bad employee. He was a bad police officer. And command staff knew it. Sergeants knew it. This was a known thing. And so they got to a point, they fired him. Like, and it took forever to fire. It took forever to get the evidence and the, and the write-ups and the, the inspections. It took forever to fire this son of a bitch. It took forever. I mean, it took, I think it took a, a, a couple years. They fired him. Well, because it's this big union shop and it's all this stuff, it goes to arbitration and the R and they did rule in arbitration. He with gets to get pay. his job back. <laughs> he gets to be a police with back pay and all this. The city lost it. And it's like, this is fucking nuts. Well, guess what happened? It was like not too long. Some other bullshit happened. He ended up accidentally shooting somebody, and uh, and it like he was selling a gun out of the trunk of a car. He may have been on duty, and accidentally, I think, shot like it was a negligent discharge. If I remember all that, but like that's this. Then it was like this thing exploded, and it's like what the fuck? And it's a cop. And they pull his fucking record, and it's like, oh, my God, they've been trying to get rid of this fucking guy. And then, you know, it becomes this big story, but then nothing ever happens. Because the reality is, in big-ass fucking cities and these big organizations, mostly run by these bureaucratic people that tend to think bigger government is better, 
they tend to be liberals. You can't fucking fire anybody. You know, it's just like Washington. You know, like the we I talked about, I rant and rave about the guy at the IRS, you know, the director, and it's like, well, you know, why isn't he in jail? Or why isn't Lois Lerner in jail? You know, these people, they just get away with everything. And it's just, you know, you know, appeals and this and that and low, whatever. We're not answering your questions. And it's just, it, it stall, stall, stall until it finally just goes away until it explodes. So I'm telling that story. Now I'm going to tell another story. And there's going to be some police officers if they're listening to this. I'm not going to mention any departments. I'm not going to mention any names. And this might make some of them uncomfortable so i'm not going to i'm not going to um i'm not going to rat anybody out so there was a police officer that i was aware of and he um you know he had a lot of potential um you know uh you know how do i say this i gotta, I gotta be careful because i really don't people to figure out who this person is you know he had a lot of potential he you know all the all the traits that i not five minutes ago was saying you need cops that could be able to fight. This guy could fight. This guy could, you know, I mean, this, this guy could probably win an MMA match against some pretty high level dudes. Athletic, fast, strong, aggressive. Here's the problem. He started to get to a point where his aggressiveness was even worrying other police officers. And it even, you know, and there were some complaints. He worked for a a smaller organization. I got to be real careful. And, um, you know, let's say like a small, let's say a, let's say a small town. I, 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 because if I say a particular type of, municipal entity that now will help track who this person was. So any, any, any town will typically have towns right. around it. Right. So like, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, Smallville will border Bigville and, you know, Leftville and Rightville. And so if it's late at night, and there are small towns with small budgets and small police departments and small amounts of crime. They don't have a lot of people working at night. So, you know, they all tend to listen to each other's radios and they may do some, you know, they may do some, um, yeah, I was just going to say you know, that some mutual, mutual aid. aid, you know, like, let, yeah, you know, but not, not official mutual aid, just like, Hey, you know, I got a car pulled over on state route 100 and like, Oh, Ray Ray's over there. Um, he's got a car pulled over and we're not doing anything. I'm going to just go over there and just, you know, I'm going to back him up. I'm just going to sit. Yeah, it's going to pull up, roll by. You know, it's right next to our jurisdiction. We're just, you know, just show up, you know, maybe park the car behind his car just to show, you know, show the flag, make sure everything's okay, that this cop isn't by himself and, you know, whatever, right? Because it's, it's good business. It's good, it, you know, it, it, you know, have each other's back. You know, there's not a whole lot going on. And if you're going to get a call emergency for something, it's probably going to be likely statistically, if something's going to happen in the next 15 minutes, it'll be where someone's already got somebody pulled over. So why not get ahead of the curve? Start heading that way anyway, because the town's quiet, right? It's good business. Your buddy's over there. He's a fellow cop. Let's go get near him. Well, here's what happened. This particular police officer got a reputation for being so aggressive that the word went out among the various, you know, Leftville, Rightville, Upville, Downville, Bigville, that if Officer So-and-so is working on Smallville and he is involved in, say, a traffic stop, you are not to go over there and and back him up. You are not to go and be a part of it. And the only reason you will go and assist him is if he gets on the radio and goes 999 officer in distress because they were all convinced that this motherfucker was going to lose his shit on somebody and get sued. And they did not want to be around him just like that cop in fucking Canada, you know, 
on his on somebody's neck for no reason. This particular officer, word had gone out unofficially. This was not written. It was verbally transmitted through, you know, patrols and units. And uh, I'm not even going to say command staffs, but maybe even some city managers or mayors or, you know, elected officials. If officer so-and-so is working, unless he's in trouble, stay away. Because the word had gone out, this guy's no good. And we can't fire him because he's in somebody else's jurisdiction. But we don't want our city, our insurance, our liability anywhere near him. So, but what ended up happening is eventually this guy is no longer in law enforcement. You know, he was given some opportunities to maybe go do some, you know, do some other things. And to this day, so I got to be very careful. This person's ego would not even allow him. I imagine he probably does not even think he was run out of law enforcement. But he was run out. And it was like, because there's no union. There's no fucking arbitration. It's this cat is not going to fucking be part of this team. Because he's trouble, and they decided the all the all the patrol guys they decided they did not want to work with this guy because he makes them all look bad, and nobody's going to get jammed up for his fucking bullshit. And that's the difference between small town policing and fucking these nightmare, huge fucking corporations that they call police departments. I mean, they're corporations, and it's impossible to do anything. It's impossible to hold anybody accountable unless it's like, uh, you know, a fucking on channel channel right. sixty four well, news. Right. That was something. the dilemma I had. As you know, I came from a very big organization, and then I was a small town city councilman. The differences were night and day, night and day. You had to be in the small town. You had to be mother, father, sister, brother. Uh, negotiator, priest, you name it, it was all hats. And it's, you're right, it was a totally different scenario. Well, you know, and that's, you know, th- this is a decision I made as a human being, as an American citizen, a long time ago. I've lived in big cities, I've worked in big cities, I made some money in some big cities. But I decided that it was better to live in a smaller town where I could know people, they could know me, you can build relationships. You know, it's like, for example, like just, because I, I, I don't want to slander anybody, so I'll use myself. Oh, you can slander me if you so want. So like, let's say, <laughs> the F- no, 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 but just, you know, but just to prove a point, like, here's the thing, <coughs> like, if I lived, if I, I mean, I mean it's not that hard. if I lived in the city of Cincinnati, I got to be, I, you know, well, you know what? Let's just, just say this. If I lived in Minneapolis, okay, and because, you know, they would know me in certain places, but like Minneapolis, they're not going to know me. Like, so all of a sudden, I, let's say I, John 911 Armory, we're moving yes. to Minneapolis. Is that what yes. this thing Min- happened? Yes, Minneapolis. There? Was it Minneapolis? Okay. So, so let's say I move there and like, let's say, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing me, whatever that even means, my life. And let's just say for some reason, I don't know, the FBI or the U.S. Marshal Service or hell, at this point, you know, I mean, freaking, you know, and the NSA at this rate decides we got to get Marky. We got to fucking get his shit and run his ass down. You know, here's the thing. In Minneapolis, they're just going to find out where I live and they're just going to bang my door and fucking just come and get me. Well, the thing is. You know, if in a small town, they can just, you know, because they have to let people know they're coming. They're like, hey, we're um, we're going to come into your town tomorrow morning. And we're going to bang. We're going to bang uh, Marky and uh, John 1911. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, be ready. And they'd be like, oh, well, we know him and we'll just call him and he can right. and surrender. Oh, I know exactly. What you know mean. what I mean? Like everybody kind of knows everybody. It's like I I could get a call and be like, "Hey, dude, um, they're coming for you. Can we just arrange a surrender and just like, you know, or be like, or the or the police chief would be like, show up like, okay, you're gonna bang Marky, you're gonna bang the John 911 Armory. The police chief's gonna be like, all right, I'm coming with you because I'm gonna show up be like, he's gonna go to the bullhorn be like, hey, Marky, it's the chief. 
come out. I mean, like, okay, right. chief, what's going on? You know what I mean? And you can't get that kind of interpersonal relationship. You got no chance. You have no chance in these big ass <laughs> cities. And it is, oh. God, they're awful. Or, or you live in a small, I mean, small town and you see visiting agencies maybe parked in the police lot. People notice the strange cars. Hey, did you see that car? <laughs> Oh, hey, now, wait a minute. That's wait a true. Minute. Wait a minute. Let me tell you a story. This actually, this was, this was a couple years ago. I want to, I was, it's very early in the morning and I'm, I don't know why I went to the grocery store. Like it's like seven o'clock. I had to go to the grocery store for something. And so I'm driving back to the armory and um, like, there's like this privacy fence behind this grocery store and like this loading dock, whatever. And literally, I just happened to look to the right, and I see the SWAT team staged up, and they're all standing around, and they're going over their plan. And I was like, they're going to fucking hit somebody, like, right here. So, you know, I, uh, you know, it's like, huh, somebody around here is about to, about to get banged. And so I almost sent a message, be like, <laughs> hey, you guys aren't coming to get me, are you? But, um, you know, they're busy. You don't want to ring their phone. But the thing is, it wasn't, you know, like, hey, like, hey, guy, hey I, I saw you guys over behind the grocery store uh, yesterday. Uh, what was that about? Like, oh, yeah, we uh, we hit this house. Down. They were like, we hit this house down the street. Well, here's the, you know, they say all this shit. This person's a whatever or whatever. Well, here's the thing. In a small town, everybody Correct. kind of gets to figure out. Your I business. know exactly what you mean. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you if if. If you're a pedophile, they're like, look, if you're a saint or you're a sinner and you live in a small town, they going to know. If you're a saint or a sinner, I can drop you in Minneapolis and nobody knows who the fuck you are. Nobody gives a fuck if you're the pope and nobody knows that you're a fucking pedophile. You can just swim in the, in the fucking uh, sea of bullshit sure. and just get by. You know, and that's a downside to some people, especially people that have shit to hide or have shit to, you know. So, I mean, you know, like, like, here's, like, here's a, like, here's a, like, tonight, like, okay, think about this. These cities. Okay. Everything's fine. Like, everything's fine. Like, I don't know, three months ago, everything's fucking fine. You know, the cities are where the money's at. The cities are where the jobs are at. The cities are where the, you know, a lot of the creature comforts and the amenities and, you know, Cities become the center of, of gravity for for small towns. I mean, I, I, I readily admit that. Um, and all of a sudden, eh, now there's the commie cough. And um, it looks like the cities, everybody's catching it. And everybody's on top of each other. That doesn't seem so good. You know, we're like people that live out, that don't live in these cities... You know, they're just, you know, they're quarantining, but they can go out. They can go to the park. They can, you know, like my level of quarantine versus somebody on man on Manhattan yes, Island they are. were two completely yes, different are. experiences. You know, and it's like, well, OK, that's a bad part of the city. So now check this out. All right. Some cop who's apparently an asshole functionally, I mean, I mean, not premeditated. But he murdered that guy. I mean, he killed that guy. Put his knee on that guy's neck for eight minutes and killed that guy. Okay? And um, that's in Minneapolis. All of a sudden now, in the city, yes, five days ago, Cincinnati was fine. Well, now they're, they're, they're fucking rioting. You know, they're right. looting. They're, root, they're not rioting. They're looting. And so over the Rhine, West End... Probably Queensgate, Cincinnati downtown business district, um, all the things in the basin. If you're living in Cincinnati, they curfew started ten o'clock tonight. That's why I'm not going down there to get mail. You know, it's like all of a sudden now something happens six hundred miles away that has nothing to do with anybody around here. And if you live in a city, it's your problem. It's like fuck that. I mean, fuck that. Like, here's the thing. Like, in a small town, yeah, you can try to riot, you can try to loot, 
I mean, you can do anything. It's ironic as hell that you say that because in the small town that borders my small town, there's supposed to be a protest. Well, the social networking of the good old boys went in overdrive tonight, and I guarantee you there will be more of them showing than protesters if there is such a protest because they don't want the shit. Well, I don't... I know they don't want the shit because the thing is, like, you know, in the small town that I live in, like, I mean, just this is this is a real thing. OK, the John 911 Armory is a is a pretty well known thing. All right. And, you know, not that the cops need my help. They don't need my equipment. They don't need my my stuff. But, you know, I remember during the North Hollywood shootout in L.A. And, you know, uh, the Mata Sereno and whatever the other douchebag's name, you know, they're the LAPD guys have like Beretta M9s. You know, these guys are fully armored and they went to gun stores grabbing guns. You know what I mean? My point is, in a small town where I know the people is worth knowing and they know me, like if they needed... Like, if they were like, hey, dude, they're like, fucking come, let's go, get it. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not going to be like, you know, all these people are going to, like, march through my town and tear up the shit. Well, you know, I'm not going to go looking for anybody, but they're not going to get past me. I'm going to sit where I sit and and protect me and mine, and you coming over here, you're going to get the fucking hammer because this is my house. This is this is where I live. These are my people. I'm not I you know, even the people across the street, I may not like them. You know, I may not even know them that well. They may even not like me at all because I'm the fucking Trump gun guy. But I'll be goddamned if I'm going to sit around and let you burn their house and beat their women. You're out of your fucking mind, because in real America, not these commie cities. Fuck you. We're, we're going to fucking kill you. That's, you know, nobody that's exactly, wants to hurt anybody. That's exactly anybody. why there are you know? 12 and here's the thing. million guns sold last month. Yeah, because all of a sudden, it's like, wait a minute. All of a sudden, things are perfectly fine. They're like, all of a sudden now, <laughs> wait a minute. You mean the cops aren't coming? They're busy? Yeah, dude, they're too busy. Everybody's busy right now trying to keep people from, like, stealing, you know, knocking over the, the, the freaking TJ Maxx or whatever the, the hell these assholes burned down it's like it's you know like it's like like the rest of america doesn't want this cop to go to prison yeah you know i mean it sucks but it's like this is not helping like and i, I thought this was interesting too like what was it um and i you and i texted about this earlier but when i was out at the range you know donald trump got on twitter and he made a comment he's like um he didn't say it the way it's traditionally said, but like, uh, like I, we always say it, looter, looters will be shot. Um, and he said it when the looting, he said it when the looting, way, but he starts, basically is like, you know, starts, how do you stop what Trump said? Yeah, something like that. And so they're what they're trying to say is they're trying to say that like the left is, I guess, I don't know, some racist guy in 1968. Mm-hmm. May Mayor, da- Mayor in Daly in Chicago, he told, I like, have the quote right here, he told the police superintendent that he will issue the order to shoot to kill any looters, any people with Molotov cocktails, or any people basically like that. He said it, and he meant it. The looters and the rioters knew it, that they would be shot, and it was quelled that minute. Yeah, because the thing is, when you're dealing with a riot, when you're dealing with people that want to fight you, and that's what it is. It's a fight. You have to show strength. Okay? That's why the knee to the neck works. Okay? But it's like, you know, strength, but also prudence. Okay? But it's interesting. Like, these people, they're so, they resort, they resort to their priors. These liberals, these hippies, these, this, this, then it's the news. Like somehow this is all back to the 60s. And this has to do with racism. And this has to, you know, somehow Donald Trump, this is like, 
I don't know, a dog whistle. It's like, wait a minute. The fucking king of England used to have a dude come out in a three-pointed <laughs> hat and a red velvet fucking coat. And they yeah, used to be literally. like, I shall read, read you the riot act. And if you do not disperse, <coughs> you will be shot. And it's like, that had nothing to do with black people. It's like, what the fuck? I mean, I, I just, just, it's like, they just are dying. They're literally, they're literally killing these communities to push an agenda. And I, I, if anyone's listening to this podcast and wants to see a voice in the darkness, that's, they're waking up to some of this. There's a guy, his name is Killer Mike. It's a black guy, he lives in Atlanta. And I think he lives in Atlanta. And Killer Mike is not a Republican. Killer Mike is not a conservative. Killer Mike is not Coleon Noir. Killer Mike is not who you typically, if you're listening to this podcast, somebody that you would listen to. But Killer Mike knows two things. Killer Mike believes in owning guns and gun rights. His reason for owning guns is he thinks America's racist and uh, uh, you want people want to kill black people and they need to defend themselves. And you know what? I think anybody should be able to defend themselves. I don't want black people killed. I mean, I'm not going to try to kill black people. So if they have guns, what do I care? I'm not going to be shooting at me. And so that's his first position. And his second position is he's now coming to the realization that these, these, he, he, and this is the way he phrases it, white liberals. Now, I don't phrase it as white liberals. I phrase it as communists who come into you look, you look at some of these riots, watch the news in these black neighborhoods, watch the news. And yeah, you'll see, you know, you know like they'll show the video of, the, of, of, you know, people like black people stealing TVs. But how many white people Lots. are you seeing wearing masks running around? And it's like, where are these fucking people coming from? This is a black neighborhood. And it's like Killer Mike is starting to realize these white liberals are coming into black neighborhoods starting riots, starting fires, smashing windows for their political agenda, and they're just tearing up our communities. And he's like, wait a minute. He's like, what are you doing? You know, and it was like, and he even called out CNN on it. And it's it's very interesting. I mean, again, Killer Mike is not the guy that most people that listen to this podcast you're going to be like, hey, I want to. He's not. He's not. He's not that pastor in North Carolina that said, you know, gave that speech at city city council. Be like, you never want to put the blame at the shooter's feet. Right. You want to put it at my feet. He's not that guy. That guy, you know, most people that listen to this podcast will be like, I love that guy. Speaking of that liberals, guy. Did I, I you that guy see hug. I love what that the guy. mayor of Washington D.C. did. Okay. No, they are protesting and rioting in D.C. outside of 1600. She came out on the news channels in Washington and said, I will not commit one Washington, D.C. police officer to protect Trump or that property because he's racist. Supposedly, then, one of Trump's people said... That's fine, Great. because besides the Secret Service, we have three military bases within 20 minutes and 28 armed agencies within three minutes. Don't come. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah um, uh, the officers, the O Club at Fort Meyer is awesome, by the way. Ask me how. Don't ask me how I know. Um but who, who the hell is she to say that she's not going to afford See, protection to a citizen because she doesn't like his politics? Well, but here's I know, but it's like, would she have done that for Barack Obama? And, you know, look, these but again, that's again, that's what you get. You get these liberal, commie, big government, bureaucrat, you know, jackasses, and they will use the system against you. Because they determined on their own, not with due process, they don't give you the benefit of the doubt. I, in a small town, look across the street and person with the Hillary sign and somebody's fucking with them. It'd be like, uh, yeah, no, that, that shit's not going to fucking happen here. 
Um, whereas, you know, these people, they use their power. They wield power for their own personal gain. It's They're not altruistic at all. And that's, she's the problem. That's why, that that's why government organizations AKA the governor of Illinois. Small. He had us on lockdown until yesterday. And that lockdown's over. I mean, that's like, that's yeah. it. I mean, now, it's like lockdown? What lockdown? What lockdown? You know, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. All I know is your profile picture of that Wilson combat is something else. No, I don't. That's the thing. No, you don't. I put um, put. I like that Wilson. That Wilson. I'm over. I'm over. Well, I haven't checked the logs because I haven't logged what I put in. I have to check. Today probably was about a hundred maybe 150 rounds. So I, the gun is the gun broke a thousand about two weeks ago, broke a thousand rounds. Um, I don't think it's at 1500 yet. Um, it could be, uh, I'll have to, when I, you know, know in the your, army tomorrow, your, I'll have to run the numbers on your it. HK. Is but, um, that what have I ever done to you? Cool. And I could even give you 17 now and it's not good enough. You discarded that like an old tramp. <laughs> Now, I, look, hey, look, uh, the VP9 is my striker gun of choice. And there's actually something I have to do regarding that. I need to make a video because we've uh, received a uh, we let's say we have received a few inquiries uh, about about a, a, uh, a product that I talked about in the past. And I had just been way too busy to deal with it because it's like I'm not dealing with this VP9 right now. But, you know, so there's a there's a there is a little nugget clue for the listener uh, when they, uh, you know, when, when, if, if this subject, if I have to check it, cause I, these people want me to check something cause they don't like what I had to say. And um, if it turns out not to be true, <laughs> they are not going to like the video that I have to make about it. Cause I am not a gear reviewer and you're going to make me fucking do this. It's like, cause you know, I don't do gear reviews. I mean, it's like, I just document. Yeah. What's going Did you on. ever find like, a holster for that Wilson? Today. So I'm, um, Oh, there's been, I haven't published any of it, but there's been a lot going on with that. Um, I'm having some issues. Um, like right now I'm, I'm carrying an AIWB. I'm using my, I'm using my keeper's concealment holster. I just cut that holster. I, I took a Dremel and just cut the, uh, I cut the hell out of that holster. Um, yeah. Cause the, and also the SRO red dot comes a lot more forward. Then I think the RMRs and some of those more, you know, duty red dots. So, you know, I cut, I cut the shit out of this holster. So, I mean, it's like, it's fine. I mean, it's not like I get a warranty from keepers anyway. I break, I, I break the holsters about every, you know, about every 18 months to two years that that I crack them. So it's like, well, I needed a holster. So, you know, whatever. So, um, and then I, we have a holster in from Filster. We have a holster. We have definitely have a holster in from Filster, and there. I think there's a second one coming. There's been some issues with the Filster holster. I'm not entirely certain. The Filster holster uses a um, a Surefire flashlight to uh, basically any gun that can that uses a Surefire, or I guess the, the different version, maybe like a different light, but this one's a Surefire. You know, if your gun can can mount a surefire light you can holster it in this holster it's kind of one of those catch-all holsters and i had to do i noticed something um i was playing with it and it was uh i noticed the sro was kind of making contact on the front of the holster so i was like i will just relieve that a little bit and um with the dremel and i relieved it but what i didn't realize was that that actually it was sitting. How do I say this? It caused the gun to drop farther in the holster than I like, making it lower to the belt. And so it turns out the um, when the, when the flashlight on the front of the gun is seated in the holster the way that they designed it to sit with the with the soft loops that I have on it the gun sits too close to the belt line for my liking. I, the number one thing I complain about 
with holsters, especially for AIWB, but in general, because there's a lot of people out there that make holsters. They're like, hey, man, here's my holster, like all that ABC company, one, two, three company. And you look at these things and they're like the pistol grips, like are so close to the belt. You can't, you have to like squirm your fingers in and around clothing in your belt to get a, a to get a grip. So what ends up happening is guys will do a partial grip, pull the gun out and adjust. And, you know, they, and, you know, then they, they, they have to do like a little like stutter step with their grip before they throw the gun up. And it's like, that is bad. If you have, if you cannot get a full master grip, boom, out on your gun, your holster is fucked up. And I don't care what fucking Delta Force fucking name is on it. And that's, that's the number one thing I see on holsters. People don't know what the fuck they're doing. Um, and so I'm hoping the Filster holster, because I used the soft loops, I just wanted to try it. And I think the soft loops, the way they're designed, tend to sit lower i'm hoping i can order a um like a a hard enclosed loop and i can get the holster to rise up i don't i don't need it to come up much maybe maybe a half inch and it would be acceptable it wouldn't be perfect for me but it would be acceptable Mm. so and then there's then there's there's a black hawk holster that's all fucked up i'm having issues with the light though too on that gun i don't think i've got the right surefire um, I don't think I have the right surefire attachment on that X300 for that. Like it, it rattles. Well, maybe they're not made for appendix. It rattles on that, on that gun. No, it just rattles. Like if I put the surefire light on the gun, I don't know if I have the right attachments for the surefire. I think the surefire light is not, maybe not correct. I don't know if I have the right, because there's a Picatinny insert and a universal insert. And then there are either some other stuff, where's, but I don't have it. Where's right. our it resident like it'll, it'll, it moves a little bit. And any ho- oh, he's working for us, man. Oh, that's uh, right. He's working. Um, he's working the riots tonight. So, but you know what? The truth is, he's just not like a big tactical guy. Freeze don't know dick about about like weapon lights. He, I mean, that is not it. That is not a gunsmith thing. I mean, dude, he can get in there and stone and hone and do all. But like, fuck it, like that tactical. No, stuff, but he's really good at changing more blades that. when people. That's bring not his them. bag at all. <laughs> I won't get into that. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. Well, I'll really? tell you like we had the bush hog die today on the John nineteen eleven range. So yeah, it's there's some there's an electrical problem with it and um it's draining batteries. Uh I put a brand new battery in it um this week. And actually uh I actually what I did is I run it. Because it, it killed the, it already killed one battery that I that I that I had winterized and kept out of it. It killed it because I left it plugged in. I was like, this thing killed the battery just sitting. And so I went and got a brand new battery on what is today Saturday, probably on Wednesday. I got a brand new battery on Wednesday and um, jumped it, got it started, and just hooked that battery up to it, and then um, ran it around. And I ran it on Wednesday, then I ran it today. But on Wednesday, when I was done, I unhooked the I, I I unhooked the contacts for the battery, and taped them so it wasn't wouldn't draw out on it. And then today, I put the contacts on, started up, and ran it and ran it a fair amount today. And the battery, it, the battery, it was running, but the battery died because it, the bush hog is hydraulic lifters, and it needs the battery to run the lifters. Or it, or not hydraulic, but it run it has a. It has a it use it uses electrical power to raise and lower the deck, like a it, it's got some kind of lifter system in it, and it it doesn't get the electricity from the motor to run that. It gets it off the battery, and I wasn't able to raise. It started to come down, and I wasn't able to raise it. And it's well, still running is but with as it's, much foliage that is There's coming some, in that thing. After, you know, after everything's been done, you're eventually going to have to get a small tractor with a, a deck behind it. Because that, that poor bush hog is, oh, I don't even know how you keep up with what you've got. Well, you know what? I was pretty pissed off. I had a, I mean, I had a, I had a real bad time with that bush hog. Um, the people that I got it from, the dealer that I won't mention, turns out they didn't assemble it right. Because, you know, they come in crates and they have to put them together. They had made some mistakes. And so I found a, uh, a new dealer and they kind of kept, kept getting it straightened out. And 
you know, and so there were problems with that, and we were kind of working through them. But also in the bush hogs defense, it was the first time that anyone had really bush hogged this property. <laughs> and we kept we me kept running into everything like i would be like giant crazy rocks and like 100 year old barbed wire <laughs> and like, i mean i'm surprised i haven't hit an indian mound yet but you know like it just comes a point when you because you know you would not intentionally run no a bush hog over like boulders you know what i mean like yeah yeah you have to clear them you know and so with yeah. all the work that's been done, you know, it just takes time to find things. And so, you know, and so it's been... It's only May. <laughs> you know, this year it's been good. You still I mean, have a long summer of cutting. That's what yeah, I said with the foliage what, coming in. Grew, oh my God, you might want to so think you get something just it, a little bit bigger. Well, the problem is that property, the it's not safe to run a tractor on. Yeah, because the, the the rifle range is natural backstops, and it's there's some pretty serious hills there, and it's just there's just ugh, you know it's it's better with this deck and the and using the UTV. It just is because you know it's more nimble and it's got power but speed, and it sits lower to the ground. And if you do roll it, but it won't roll. You're right. But the thing is built to roll. You know what I mean? Like a, a Polaris General can roll. You can roll it. You know, it may flood it, but it'll, you can roll it. It's not a big deal. Just keep your hands inside. Speaking you know? of, I mean, speaking of the you range, roll a fucking tractor, have, fuck me. You got, I you know, know the pistol range you pretty much have dialed in. What about your thousand yard? <laughs> the million dollar question. Um, <laughs> damn, you're not kidding. Um, okay. I can't, I don't want to speak on that publicly yet. Um, there's some things going on there. Uh, I, I haven't officially announced this, but we do have 700 right now. If I, in a pinch, like, here's the thing. If somebody, sh- if, if Donald Trump showed Huge. up and said, Hey, you need to shoot. You you need you huge. You need you need huge numbers. You have to shoot. I can't even do his voice. You need to shoot seven hundred yards. Be like, yes, Mister President, we can fucking shoot seven hundred yards. I mean, it might be one guy at a time, but we can fake seven. Um, and you have to know what you're doing, like, because I don't have. You know what I mean? Like, you you just can't. Like, I would not let. Like, there's only like even the snipers. There's only three snipers that I would let them shoot that. And even then they have to shoot it one at a time so we can work together on it. Um, I've got seven right now. And then I have a plan that we might, might do eight. And then I, I, then, then without getting into it, we might call it at eight. We might call it at set. What really would be eight, but the, the eight wouldn't come until next year because it would be, it would it would in we because oh, right. that would and be I remember the only why rifle range oh, on this side. Now I remember why. And, so yeah, seven's fine. Uh, I, I, yeah, seven's fine. Seven's fine. You do not do not elaborate. Yes, I so, remember now. Seven's fine. Yeah. So yeah. So you know when you get old, the senility okay, does so, kick in once yeah. in a while. So you have to excuse me for that. You, well, you know, you sent me the picture of the steak, and I haven't been I right since. It. So. <laughs> oh man! I have to post Did you take that. a that was picture great. I, for I, my I took a picture of it. Is that yeah. the real reason? And you even showed the menu. <laughs> well, sure. Yeah, so you better you better uh, edit it. <laughs> was the menu in the picture? I have to look. Yes, it was. Let me see. I got dock steak. Was it? Oh, was it? Oh shit! Yeah, some you can. The can, you can't see read the prices off that. Yeah. No. Wow, you know what? Yeah, yeah. you can. Oh, those, like are my cheap. those are cheap. Those are cheap. How many white Kessel Give me a break. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will tell you this because I went ahead and I covered. Um, I covered Doc's meal because you know Doc was at the range all day, and I was like, fine. You know what? So basically, wow. with um, the meal without tip was like one hundred fourteen dollars. No. So, so and then you know we don't drink. So right. 
I mean, they, you know, they they try to get you, but we can't. I mean, you know, one, one I don't drink too. I'm carrying a gun, and three, oh, yeah. or, you know, he has a long drive home. It's like, no, 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 we don't. Well, well so you know, it was tip. It was, and I left a good tip because they they actually all I'm kept, saying, all I'm, the, all I'm saying, they kept the you well know, or so. I'm still mm. looking forward to our dinner. Yeah, actually, um, this reminds me, um, and don't think I have forgotten about this. Aim surp, I think it was aim. Aim surplus popped up with um, Smith and Wesson model. I think they were sixty five. Really? Basically, it's, stainless steel yeah, model. Yeah, you remember tins. the price? Yeah, with a hammer. They were. Oh, that's not bad. I think they were four hundred, maybe. Well, I, the, I know. I could that be last one I bid on it went. They to weren't the cheap. It was they weren't like super cheap. Yeah, it was. Oh, New York. Was like cop, wasn't that a marked cop gun or something? Yeah, yeah, that's why you're, you know, that's that's totally worth buying. That's a better buy. Right. So, I mean, like those NY1 and NY2 guns, oh, yeah, that's, those are totally worth buying. And see, see, me personally, when you find one with a bobbed hammer, like, that's my jam right there. Because I think all revolvers should be shot double action. Yeah, they are nice. I'm just like, well, speaking shit. about cops, I love any those. police water? Um, well, like, what is it? Hold on here. That, that's why I asked. How long are we I don't want oh to get God, rude now. So, you know what? Yeah, no, I, oh, that's right. Well, oh, you know yeah, well, no, what? What, ha- what happened last time? We got timed out or something, so didn't you're, we? You're good. Uh, it turns out the, the, uh, recording, the recording software would not let us go for, uh, it cuts off at two hours. So, you know what? It's a it's midnight. It's twelve or it's like eleven fifty nine, twelve. It just turned midnight. So um I don't know. You know what? I here's the there's a story out of Kansas, uh Fort Leavenworth of an active shooter and um like Master Sergeant uh was coming across a bridge and saw this guy and I guess he shot somebody and was shooting at other people and, and Master Sergeant was like again, kinda like the whole small town. Uh, not not to not today, <laughs> Al Qaeda, and he just hit him with his truck. You know, it's like, you know, just ran the guy down, and it's like, yeah, that's how you do it. Because you know, when in doubt, because you know, in the movies, everybody wants to start shooting each other with cars. Dude, long skinny that's one it. on the right. If someone's shooting that's you it. and you're in a car, just run them over. I mean, seriously. Oh, which reminds me, I gotta I gotta send you that's the it. link. Um, let's see. There was a FedEx driver. Did you? I believe it was in Philly or New York City. I'll send it to you. Was well, some guy crawled up and under the semi during these riots last night? And I believe he was. They said he was going to start the semi on fire or something. The semi guy did not know he was under there and drug him to death. And they got it on video. Oh God. That kind of reminds me of like, I remember my grandfather's farm, you know, they had vehicles like trucks and stuff and it would get to be cold and uh, like in the winter and like cats and stuff would crawl up into the engine spaces to get warm. Then he would come out and start his truck and like just, oh, and like, so like not only were like, oh no, fluffy. But then it's like you have to clean it out of the yeah. truck. Well, that's what comes and then oh, I'll, I'll even give you the fast Ugh. forward time. But one of the guy, I guess, the dead guy is laying there, and one guy starts after they're burning the town. The one guy says, "Look at the cops! They just got out of the truck and they're laughing." Gallows humor, you know. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Who? And then tell you what. Well, because I know we've been going long. It is midnight. You probably got to get to bed. You know what? I got to get to bed <laughs> look, too. So I'm actually sitting in my truck in a parking lot. And um, so here's <laughs> look. I I looking very suspicious. So here here will be the um, here will be the uh, peace day resistance. She will cover the police blotter and the cultural uh, and the uh, um, uh, the uh, the uh, the cultural. Uh, what do you call it? The um, uh, pop culture section of something the Something about her son. So did you I see can't what stand Madonna her, so I did? I didn't even read it. Oh, dude. Madonna is so awesome because <laughs> Madonna is a functioning psychopath. So, I mean, like, seriously. Like, um, I have this theory that celebrities, um, you know, 
if you if you spend your like she was a celebrity probably starting at 19 or 18 19 probably definitely by 19 like she was like a super hot like the whole world knew her she was 19 now she's in her I yeah, mean, she, I'm 40 yeah i think she's older than me she's got to be in her 50s <laughs> um maybe 60 she might even be 60 i don't even know so but she's like her perceptions of the world are so jacked up she does this crazy shit and she doesn't realize how she looks. So when COVID happened. Yes, I did. When the COVID thing, did you see her in the bathtub? <clears throat> okay. And so, you know, you're like, everyone's, lo- <clears throat> excuse me. Everyone's looking at this and it's like, okay, wait a minute. So she's like, I'm in a bathtub and she's kind of like, she's very dramatic and she's naked and it's just, soapy murky water and these candles and this camera's looking down and she's giving this speech about how it's coming for all of us and it doesn't care and all this nonsense and all anybody can think is they're looking at her and they're like yes. i did not know madonna looked like that like she looks like a chinese person like she's had so much she's had so much surgery and then she put on makeup to oh, make it yeah. look like you know, like, I mean, so she could, cause she filmed this. It wasn't, it wasn't spontaneous. She filmed it. I mean, it was a production. It was performative art. So, you know, and they, she got totally roasted. It was like, just well, kind of yes. Yeah, sure. Like the world, <laughs> hey, what does Madonna have to say about the COVID? So, dude, like a couple of days ago, she gets, she gets in front of a, she gets to like a FaceTime or whatever and she starts George Floyd. About the, the guy, I'm sorry, I don't know the guy's name. Um, the guy, George George Floyd, Minneapolis. We're not that far up. Stop it. Up in uh, up in Canada, and so, 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 you know, and and it's like she, I guess she's, and so she decides, okay, because of in memory of him, and she's got a she's got all these adopted kids from all around the and world. Date Dennis, like, yeah, and date Dennis Rodman, black kids and Asian kids and. <laughs> You know, lesbian kids. Yeah. And so, so, you know, so she's got this boy, he's, he's black and she's like, my son is going to do like a, a, a performance. Like, I think it was like a Michael Jackson thing. And I guess the kid could do it, but it's like in the kitchen, like in the kitchen of her house. And it's like this kid, I don't know, he's probably 20, but this kid has grown up with Madonna. He has no idea what the real world is like. He is so screwed up and not, it's not his fault. Like she, she's like, she, it's, it's just another example of, of, of celebrities almost on Twitter. You know, George Floyd was murdered. Canada Canada is burning, but somehow Madonna has got to make it about her. She's got to insert herself into this story. These people can't help themselves. And it's so cringeworthy. I actually, I kind of enjoy it. It's like, because it literally, it, it teaches me. It, it's like, but for the grace of God, like, oh my God, this is, oh. this is, please never let me be so disconnected from reality that I turn on a camera because I do turn on cameras and I do something so yeah. batshit crazy. Yeah, you know, I become an internet. But I, I tell you what, you, you weren't know, kidding. She's like, definitely please God, been road hard. Please, way Jesus. Left. Oh, she, she she looks bad. Well, well, the best thing my my favorite one about Madonna. See, this is the theme. This is this is going to be we, we can all look. The world is America's burning. Everybody says everybody's racist. Nobody can get along. But I think we can all can unite that Madonna needs therapy. Okay, because here's here's another one. So. I think right. Aretha Franklin, like a couple of years ago, Aretha Franklin passed away, right? Wasn't Aretha Franklin? She passed away. I mean, like, I mean, like Aretha Franklin, my God. Like, I mean, like, if you listen, Aretha Franklin was one of the greatest singers that's ever come out of the United States. And so, you know, all these big celebrities, all these big singers, you know, uh, Motown, like everybody, you know, it's Aretha, they, everybody's got to go. It's like the death of a president. It's a big deal. So, of course, Madonna, she's been this major star for all these years, even in her in her in her advanced age. She's still somewhat relevant. She still produces stuff. 
she tries to act like she's 30. And so they ask her to come up and could you please say a few words at Aretha's funeral? And she spends, yes. I don't know, like I four or five, clip. six minutes talking about herself. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's like, you know, and it, it almost became a meme. And it's like, I'll tell you what, someday, someday I hope when I die that I'm no, famous I'm not enough that Madonna will show up at my funeral <laughs> and talk about herself for seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> all right well this wraps up episode 175 of the uh, john 1911 podcast if you want to see any picture stories or links of anything we've discussed uh, you can go to our website john 1911.com that's j-o-h-n 1911.com remember it's all about shooting guns and having fun and bye bye getting burned up in a riot.